Welcome to the campus of Bergstrom Court on the campus of Minnehaha Academy as we present the campus of high school basketball once more. I'm Mike Beaton and I'm presenting the second in our doubleheader night at Minnehaha Academy. It's the last regular season game of the year for our two tri-metro teams as the Minnehaha Academy Redhawks, number six in class 2A, host the Providence Academy Lions. Minnehaha at 17 and four, Providence at 11 and eight. And this game has significant implications for the playoffs for both teams. Minnehaha Academy, if they can get a little bit of help from Blake, who plays Brooklyn Center tonight, they could take the second seed in the conference tournament. And Providence Academy, right now seeded sixth, hoping to get another win and hoping for a Concordia loss. If that happens, they would move up to the fifth seed. Either way, both schools will be playing on Friday in the first round of the conference tournament. As we mentioned in the first game, Tri-Metro Conference scrapped both the boys and girls, both the boys and girls scrapped the East and West divisions of the Tri-Metro. It's all one conference now, and instead having a Tri-Metro Conference tournament to provide more quality games against each other. So we'll do our best to follow up the names for you. As I have to admit, I didn't have a whole lot of time to study the rosters on both sides. But I can tell you that starting for the Minnehaha Academy Redhawks, we have John Pryor, number two, he's the senior center. Number four, Jesse Johnson, the six foot senior guard. Number five, Evan Tadonio, the 5'9 senior guard. Number 24. Well, there's two of them. We'll have to uh, get a name for you on that in a moment. 224s and number 34, Kahari Carter. And for Providence Academy, in numerical order, Nick Belke, number 11, number 20, Jackson Canfield, number 21, Joe Heck, number 33, Ben Ratliff, and number 35, Eric Rickelson. Minnehaha with the first possession, and no basket there. It will stay with Minnehaha. No, actually, it will go to Providence. They're wearing the white jerseys. Minnehaha wearing the black. Red Hawks ranked number six in Class 2A, and they've been a strong presence in the last few years under head coach Lance Johnson. In 2A and fouled is Rickelson, the 6'5 senior center. He will shoot free throws. Rickelson gets the front end. both in our first two points of the game. Minnehaha will try to tie it up and a steal by number 11 on Providence Academy. That's Nick Bulky. Here's Hack out to Bulky. And hands it off to Ratliff. Bulky again. Bounce pass over to Rickelson, and he is fouled. The whistle comes late. So that sends him back to the free throw line where he made his first two attempts. Rickelson averaging seven and a half points per game this season. And Rickelson at perfect four of four to start this contest. 
Here's Tedonio with the ball for Minnehaha. And number 24 scoring. That's Thomas Gideon. There were two 24s listed on the roster, but no question, it's Thomas Gideon. Marcellus Hazard is checking in. Charge is called, so Providence will turn it over. The foul is called on Heck, and we should point out the head coach for Providence Academy is Adam Schmalzbauer. Providence Academy located in Plymouth, former member of the Minnesota Christian Athletic Association, now a part of the Tri-Metro Conference. Providence Academy had a tough loss to Brooklyn Center in the last meeting, and there's Marcellus Hazard with a little layup. And pushing the tempo is Providence, Joe Heck with the score. And it's 6-2 in favor, or 6-4 I should say, in favor of the Providence Academy Lions. Steal by Rickelson. Canfield racing through. Can't hit the runner, and it's rebounded by Hazard. Foul. And the backcourt fouls are always tough to take. Here's John Pryor. Pryor had a very dramatic finish a couple of years ago in a non-conference game against St. Paul Central. Came up short, unfortunately. Had a chance to tie the game up in the free throw line. Uh, missed on those free throw attempts and a backboard violation prior couldn't save it in time. But uh, this year, Mini Haha kind of getting back to normal, at least back to where they used to be. A top 10 team in Class 2A, always competitive. They played Central earlier this season, 164-45. In fact, uh, Minnehaha has won their last four games. Their last loss was the end of January against De La Salle, one of the top teams in Class 3A. Most recent game was a 103-55 win over St. Agnes. And getting the fadeaway jumper is Ben Ratliff. Providence has been of a bumpy road. They've won their last couple of well, they had that loss to Brooklyn Center in overtime. There's Marcellus Hazard scoring on the inside drive. And Pryor with the block, but it stays Providence ball. And Canfield can't hit the baseline J. Rebound, Evan Tedonio. Hazard will shoot free throws. Couldn't quite make it work from Carter. Hazard averaging 11.1 .1 points per game. Both teams prefer a balanced approach. <laughs> Leading score for Minnehaha is Kahari Carter at 12.8. And the leading score for Providence is Joe Heck at 11.9. Hazard splits. It's 8-7 in favor of Providence Academy early in this first half. Mini ha, -ha ball. Here's Tedonio over to Hazard, over to Pryor. Hazard has been very athletic in the opening minutes of this contest, but many ha, ha teams always have a little bit of footwork about them. Hazard, bullseye. Hazard has scored eight of many ha ha's 10 points.
Unable to post up is number 22 for Providence Academy. That is Sean Healy. Pryor pulls up, gets the kiss off the glass. Timeout Providence. With 13.38 left, Minnehaha leads 12 to eight. And let's take a look, a closer look at this Minnehaha Academy schedule, as we mentioned, and won the last four games, including the win over St. Agnes. Started the year on a roll in a big way. Won their first five games of the year. Ran in their first obstacle at Champlain Park, got blown out of that one, 90 to 53. Then resumed their winning trends. Lost another one to Blake, who is the second place team in the Tri-Metro standings. But overall, a very solid mark for the Minnehaha Academy Redhawks. As we mentioned, just 17 and four in the year. So no big winning streaks, but no big losing streaks either. They've been getting you know, four wins here, five here. And And again, trying to get that last inch of positioning for the Tri-Metro Conference. And why is seeding important? Whoever makes it through the first two rounds will host the championship as the top seed. But I should say the highest seeded team will host. So in the case of the girls, De La Salle will host Providence Academy, even though the Lions played at their facility earlier this season. Sidonia with the rebound for Minnehaha Academy. Well, they're not going to get number one. That will belong to De La Salle. Getting fouled is Carter. He'll shoot free throws. But if they could get the second seed, that gives them a little more room for error, so to speak. The first two rounds will be played at the alternate site. So whoever their first round opponent is, at this point, it would be the six seed Lions, if the stats are to hold as they are. the second game would be played at Providence Academy. If they move up to the number two slot, that would put them against St. Anthony Village. It, we should point out that six of the 12 teams in the Tri-Metro Conference have records of 500 or better. Pryor got tangled up. Minnehaha saves it. And the block. We're seeing some long skip passes here. The full court game in effect. Breyer slows it down, launches a three. Switch. 17 to eight in favor of the Red Hawks. Providence trying to play fast pace. Can they do it? Well, they're gonna slow things down. There's Healy getting the touch. And a reverse layup for Ben Ratliff. Carter. Out to Pryor. Long three again. Not quite. Rebound hazard. Pryor thought about him and backs off. Jesse Johnson. Tadonio. Back to Pryor. He'll try one more time. Off the heel. Rebound. Heck. This was the originally scheduled game to take place at Minnehaha Academy, but because of the Trimetro Conference format, when Minnehaha found out they played De La Salle again, they had to squeeze that game in first. And so two games in one evening. with the steal, hangs on to it. Finds his open man in Johnson, and that three-pointer is in and out. Rebound, Canfield. The 6'4 senior guard. In trouble, and drawing the foul is Ben Ratliff. More substitutions coming in for both teams. Uh, 
Radliff averaging 11 points per game. Matthew Richelson stepping in the game for Providence Academy. Josh Wentz also in the game for Minnehaha wearing number three. Wentz, out to Johnson. Marcellus Hazard, finger roll short. It will stay with the Red Hawks. Minnehaha last qualified for state two years ago. Lost to St. Paul Academy in the section semifinal round last year. John Pryor can't hit from three-point range. Rebound, Canfield. Providence finished with a 13 and 14 mark last season, but hope to change that tune and go over 500. Nice drive to the basket for Ben Ratlin. Wentz in trouble, finds Gideon. Johnson left alone, has the space, but can't hit the tray. Hazard, rebound, too strong. And another try for the Red Hawks. They've been very proficient on the offensive side of the glass. Little circus shot is no good for Johnson. And another tip, another O board. Wentz for three. And that ends the possession, so four tries. Nothing doing for the Red Hawks. And that ball came dangerously close to skirting my tripod. Rad left to inbound. 9.47 left in the first half, 17-13 in favor of the Red Hawks. And Providence pulling off the reverse layup for the second time tonight. Eric Richelson this time with the honors. Scramble. It's getting crazy over here. And Gideon is fouled. We'll shoot a pair. Thomas Gideon, the 6'4 senior forward. He averages 12 and a half points per game. Foul is on Keeley, his first personal. Neither team in the penalty yet. Both, as you saw, it's 1915 Red Hawks over Lions. Carter can't get the steal, he'll be called for the foul. Minnehaha still with two to give, nine minutes to go. Here's Ratliff. Over to Richardson. And Richardson tried to draw the foul, can't do it. Gets his own rebound though. And gets out of traffic to safety. Here's Ratliff. Losing the ball. But there for the recovery is Sean Healy. Nice play, man. And it pays off, Ben Ratliff finally turns that possession into a bucket. He has nine points to pace the Lions. Wentz, pump fakes the three. Finds Gideon. Tadonio from long range, in and out. Some fancy maneuvering and an offensive rebound. Tadonio 
with a little dump to Hazard. And the paint becoming a hazardous area for the Providence defense. Marcellus Hazard up to 10 points. Already near his average, and he didn't even start in this one. That shows you the depth Minihaha has. Hazard with the steal after a bad pass. He's got speed. He launches. That was close to a goaltending call, but the ball was going away from the rim. And Wentz saves it. Gets it out to Gideon. Minihaha, perhaps the best improvising team. And as soon as I say that, Hazard's pass a little too high for Wentz, and they turn it over. But still, a very strong improvisational team. Perhaps one of the best I've seen all season. One of the favorites in Class 2A, again, ranked number six. Providence also in 2A, but more of a long shot there to take the title. Providence turns it over, 7.26 remaining in the first half. A very quick moving period. Hazard bounces over to Gideon. To Hari Carter. To Tedonio. Wentz. Back to Carter. And Minyap going a little slow. Now the baseline drive. Carter couldn't get the bounce, though. Hey, down in front. In trouble, but saving it is Richelson, and now missing the three-pointer is number 30, Jack Holzrude for Providence. But they get an offensive rebound, ball still live, and hauled in by Eric Richelson. Carlsrud again to Sean Healy. Colesrud, I should say. Healy goes over to Colesrud. Providence slowing the tempo. They're down by four, close game. Heck, swarmed. Gets out of the double team with Richelson. Eric Richelson hands off to his brother. And that was last touched by Minnehaha Academy. And the Providence coach has stepped all the way out to the half court line to get a full timeout call. He was obviously not protesting, even though he left the coach's box by <laughs> several feet, wanted to get the full timeout call, and you saw his uh, very calm demeanor there, so nothing to be concerned about on that aspect. So 5.57 remaining. Let's take a look at the Providence schedule. As we mentioned, it's been kind of a bumpy road this season, but they do have an 11 and eight record overall, four and five in the conference. Tough loss to Brooklyn Center. That was the first overtime game of the year. And going back to the last several games, like we mentioned it's been a tough situation for these Lions. They have lost five of their last six contests. And that includes a 53 to 28 loss to Blake. Not a lot of offense in that one. The last win it was over St. Croix Lutheran, the last place team in the Tri-Metro Conference, but started out strong and have had some harder times since. As prior to losing five of their last six, they had won their, they had a four game winning streak. And started out the year winning their first six games. So they would like to reverse course here and getting a quality win against the number two team, in the, or number three team in the Tri-Metro, number six team in class 2A would be a huge boost. And it would also set up a rematch with this very same team. And well, it's a good thing there was nothing in that cup or that or that could have gotten pretty messy for the for the uh, clock staff down there. 5.49 left in the first half. 
it is conceivable that these two teams could play each other on Friday. Three-pointer on the way, no good from Canfield, and it's picked up. Here comes Carter. Quick, he is. Agile, and the Providence fans in attendance wanted to travel, won't get it. Jesse Johnson, back to Pryor, over to Johnson again. Carter for three, too strong. Rebound, Canfield. Now Canfield pulls up. That's too strong as well. Hazard with the scoop. Little bounce pass. Gideon can't haul it in. Saves it. Marcellus Hazard is there. To remove the hazardous situation. I'm sure he's heard a few of those puns several times. If he had a nickel, I'm sure he'd be a millionaire. Wouldn't have to pay for anything. We see the Miniha Academy girls already unwinding. And... Providence unable to respond. But they get an offensive rebound thanks to Healy, but it's stolen away by Carter. One-on-one. -on -one. Layup is short. Foul. <laughs> foul is charged to Canfield. Providence out of fouls to give now. 4.33 left in the first period. Very quick moving one. Some, uh, another substitution in for the Red Hawks. Jaleel Davis, number 11, steps on the floor. Pryor with the inbound honors. Finds Jesse Johnson. No relation to the Sports Page Magazine photographer of the same name. Tadonio dumps off to Johnson. Davis out to Carter, back to Davis. Davis pulls up, can't hit it. Rebound, Sean Healy. With the poke and the strip is John Pryor. Can he make the finish? Yes, he can. Twenty-five, seventeen. Reach and foul on the Red Hawks. They had two to give. <laughs> Inbounding is bulky. Heck. Five-footer off the mark. Kaharder, Kahari Carter with the rebound. He finds a racing Jesse Johnson who is hit with the charge. And taking the hit was Nick Bolke, but he was set. So the Red Hawks out of fouls to give. But a long way to go. being heckled. And now Providence executing some motion. <laughs> Jaleel Davis hit with a foul. That will send Eric Richelson to the charity stripe. He averages 9.7 points per game. For the Lions, it's number 10, Sam Cardle. Richelson makes both free throws, draws the margin down to six. Tadonio thought about the three, but will fire a 15 footer instead. Comes up short, rebound Carter. Finds an open John Pryor from long range, can't connect. 
This time the rebound falls in the hands of Ben Ratliff, but Providence is going to make a stand. They're going to have to neutralize the offensive rebounding skill set of Minnehaha Academy. That much is clear. Ratliff to Joe Heck. Cardle. And it will stay with Providence Academy. And here's Hazard, who has provided a huge platform of scoring for many. Haha -ha Academy has scored 12 of their 25 points. Richelson hits the ball again after getting the pass from Canfield. Now Canfield with the touch. Skip to Ben Ratliff. Canfield, three pointer is blocked by Davis. Fight for the ball. Picked up by Kahari Carter. Here comes that track-like speed again. Marcellus Hazard with the finish. Minnehaha smart enough to know you stay with your most productive outlet. Uh, nice give and go there. Couldn't finish, but Ben Ratliff with the put back bucket. He's up to 11. Carter. Looking for Davis, who's double teamed, and he will draw the foul. It's a one on one situation. Come on, Matt. Let's go, Lions. Carter leaves that possession empty, though, or I should say Davis. Go here, take him all way, all way. Blocking foul. Way to go, Eric. Charge to Eric Richelson. Or I should say he, he drew it. The foul is charged to Evan Tedonio. His first. Noise picks up. That may be the first time all year I've heard anybody get loud for free throws. You see the rest of the girls hanging around. I saw Chloe Gunderson in there. The, most of the girls' team have huddled together in one section of the bleachers. There's Kara Kaminsky, the freshman. Richardson splits. Offensive rebound, but Canfield can't do much with it. It's still in the hands of Providence, and they draw another foul. So Matthew Richelson will go to the line. He averages seven and a half points per game. <laughs> Chloe Gunderson is near the mink court stripe. Decompressing. Richardson will be subbed out. Sean Healy back in for Providence Academy. A very close game between the two clubs. Providence unable to hit their free throws here. And the lead is still five for the Red Hawks. Could it be eight? Not quite. Jump ball, Providence Academy with the possession arrow. The steal off the inbound pass. And Carter from the top of the key. A bit of a shooting funk. Messing up with the synchronization of Minnehaha Academy. Johnson dumps it off. 
Marcellus Hazard will make sure they leave that possession with a pair. He's up to 16, less than a minute to go in half number one. Canfield in traffic. And the ball is poked, stripped away by Carter. Minihaha in transition. Carter will shoot free throws. Kahari Carter, number 34, the 6'2 senior guard, averaging 12.8 points per contest for the Red Hawks. Seven seconds to go. Carter makes both free throws. 31 22 is the score. Providence in trouble. Jump ball. Minnehaha with the possession arrow. The trap was sprung. to Hazard, to Donio from 14 feet. Actually more like 17 feet, but it doesn't fall anyway. And they leave Providence open on transition and to Donio will be hit with his second foul of the game. Both players took a thud. <laughs> Double bonus for the Lions. But they have missed five or four of their last five free throws. Richardson finally gets on the board, but the Red Hawks can run the clock out and try to extend this margin to double digits. Pryor, pump fakes, Hazard, the hot hand, in and out. So a little cooler going into halftime, but the Red Hawks still have a 31-23 lead thanks to the gluttony of second chance opportunities on offense. We'll pause for a few minutes and review the numbers. And confirm a few other things for you. You're watching high school basketball right here on TSB television. Welcome back to Bergstrom Court on the campus of Minnehaha Academy as we continue our coverage of high school basketball. I'm Mike Peden, and I'm presenting this match between Minnehaha Academy and Providence Academy, the final regular season game for both schools. They begin the Tri-Metro Conference Tournament on Friday, and Minnehaha is hoping with the win and some help they can move up to the second seed. Otherwise, uh, there will be a rematch with these two teams on Friday over at Providence Academy, as we mentioned. The alternate school will host the first two rounds, and the highest seeded team to advance to the championship will host the championship game. In the girls' case, it's going to be De La Salle for the boys. We won't know until next Tuesday. There you go, Ben. There Providence you go. Academy starting things off quickly with a baseline J from Ben Ratliff. He had 11 points in the first half. Eric Richardson had nine. Those are your notables. Marcellus Hazard leading all players to 16. And there's Kahari Carter averaging two points to his total. It brings him up to six. John Pryor has seven points. And those are your numbers. Almost a five second violation, but Jackson Canfield avoids it. Finds Nick Bolke. And a foul already with 17.25 left in the second half. Cam 
Canfield. Out to Heck. Joe Heck with the runner, short, gets his own rebound, can't finish in the paint. Gideon, I should say Carter with the board. Sidonio over to Carter. He's short and rebound Richelson. Hazard on the floor this time in place of Gideon. There's been something going on that I'm not aware of, but we'll find more about that later. Jackson Canfield with his first triple and his first field goal of the game. Carter finds an escape route in Hazard, but he loses the ball to Richelson. Canfield tripped up, double dribble violation. Here's Evan Tedonio. Pryor out to Carter. 17-footer is off the heel. Rebound, Ben Ratliff. Province Academy with numbers if they pursue. Close, but they laid off. Close to a goaltending. I'm not sure who gets credit for that basket. Richardson might have touched it. So we'll give the points to him, but... Either way, Providence Academy makes this a one possession game. Still a long way to go, but they're staying in this. But Marcellus Hazard has other plans. He is up to 18 points. Bulky trying to push, losing it. Ratliff to Richelson. Eric Richelson posts up around Carter for the layup. He's up to 13. Jesse Johnson pump fakes the three, kicks back out. Tadonio has it now. Johnson over to Tadonio. Providence playing for a swing, it seems. Jackson Canfield with the rebound. He races down court, can't get the layup. Here's Jesse Johnson for three. Bullseye. His first field goal of the contest. We see some of the other mini haha -ha players having some fun. Uh, a few of them have left it because it's a school night for these folks. Joe Heck finding Bulky on the baseline. Jay Swish. And now we're seeing some other players get on the score sheet. Bulky with his first field goal. Tadonio has yet to score. Pump fakes out to Johnson. He also offers a pump fake. Bounce over to Carter. Carter can't draw the foul, can't make the runner either. Bulky with the rebound. Bulky, the six foot senior guard. Canfield, 14 footer, is short. Rebound. Finds its way to Eric Richardson. They wanted a walk. Won't get it. Campfield draws the foul. Foul is on Tadonio, his third personal. Campfield at the line. He averages 10.8 points per game for the Providence Academy Lions. Sean Healy in the game now for the Lions. And Jackson Campfield with that free throw, we have just informed. 
breaks the all-time school record for Providence Academy. So Canfield is now the all-time scorer at the school. So congratulations to Jackson Canfield, the 6'4 senior guard. As he takes his place in school history, he makes both free throws, so he's now up to five points. It's a two-point game. Minnehaha leads 38-36 with 13-24 left in the first half. Tough shot. No foul call. That was a clean block. And an empty possession despite crashing the paint for Providence Academy. Much to the dismay of the faithful from Plymouth. Good ball movement by Minnehaha. They've been displaying that throughout the contest. Got a little too fancy with the passing. Pryor couldn't find Jaleel Davis, throws it away. We have one more girls, boys, doubleheader of sorts, and that will be the Twin Cities Championship. Which will be our final stand of the 2012-13 broadcast season. It's been a very busy one, but perhaps the most refreshing of all. Evan Tadonio with the steal and the finish and the foul. A heart-wrenching way to get your first field goal, but certainly a highlight-worthy play for the senior guard. Senior heavy teams on both sides. Among the primary players. And Tadonio completes a three-point play. The foul is charged to number 20. Canfield, and we have a timeout called by Providence Academy. They have two remaining. With 12.21 left in the second half, Providence trailing Minnehaha, 41-36. It's going to be a tough representation of perhaps a very admirable one with three Trimetro teams in the rankings. You've got Blake, as we mentioned, De La Salle. They've only lost to Blue Valley Northwest. Breck is in the mix. Always some good ball in the Trimetro. From a scoring standpoint, Providence getting a little more distribution. Ratliff and Eric Richardson have provided most of the scoring for Providence. For Minnehaha Academy, Marcellus Hazard is far and away the top scorer. He leads all players with 18 points. But overall, you're not seeing too many players represented in the score column. Canfield. It's Joe Heck. And a bump. Officials call it incidental. And a leap for the Paul in the pass, but Gideon with the block. Sidonio. And Jesse Johnson lines up the tray from the corner. Minnehaha's ball movement is so fluid, you never know when they'll pull up or when they'll make another pass. With no shot clock, you can do that with impunity. But their crisp passing allows for high quality offensive possessions and a five second violation on Providence Academy. So their defense stepping up on that play. 44-36 the score. Johnson over to Pryor, to Tadonio, back to Johnson. Almost losing the handle, 11.25 left in the second half. Providence keeping an eye on him from three-point range. The long skip pass is nearly deflected. 
And Providence Academy does get the turnover. John Pryor playing his case, but won't get it. Steal by John Pryor. And a no-look pass, but Wentz can't finish. Great setup, but lousy ending. Matthew Richelson. And now Providence showing some ball movement, but short on the three-pointer is Joe Heck. Vinny Ah pushing the tempo once more. Kahari Carter will shoot a pair. Mentioned Kahari Carter, averaging 12.8 points per game to lead the Minnehaha Academy Redhawks. Although Marcellus Hazard may take over that role after this contest. Carter splits, he's up to seven points, but Minnehaha's lead is slowly enlarging. They're up to nine. 45-36, 10-35 left. And another steal off a lob. Johnson losing the ball, and it's picked up by Joe Heck, who stops, pops, and will shoot a pair. Joe Heck with just two points. Team's leading score at 11.9. Heck makes the front end. Pure on both, he's up to four. Margin now seven, Minnehaha throws it away. The long skip passes have a higher risk of doing so, and a blocking foul will be charged to Kahari Carter. That's his third personnel. We'll have to keep an eye on the foul situation as we move along. The Providence unable to make them pay for it. Missing the tray. Marcellus Hazard, here he comes. And there it goes. Heck out to Canfield. Back to Heck. Over to Richelson. Canfield, top of the key. He'll be short. Wentz with a little bump off the rebound, but no foul called. Hazard kicks out to Gideon. Gideon unable. Providence Academy, goodbye. Joe Heck with a successful layup. Sharp passing on that possession. Margin now five. Carter bouncing to Gideon. Gideon blocked. Picks up his own rejection and will go to the line. The foul is on Eric Richardson, his third personal. Gideon, averaging 12 and a half points per game this season. Both. He's up to six. Minnehaha up 47 40.
Matthew Richardson. Sean Healy. I would assume there's some relation to Anne Marie Healy, the Harvard alum, or Harvard player, the alum of Providence. And a little fancy move by Matthew Richardson to get on the board. Hazard out two. Gideon. Providence wanted to travel, won't get it. Ball still live and saved by Eric Richardson. Throw the records out the window in this one. Matthew Richardson. Not just that it's Eric, but he draws the foul anyway. Foul is on Hazard, his second personal. Richardson had, gets on the board. I should say he already was. Not too active yet in the second half, but still leading his team in points. Not a big crowd tonight, but it is a school night, as they say. I'm sure it will expand when state tournament time comes. Tadonio kicks out to Jesse Johnson. Back out to Kahari Carter, Hazard, over to Gideon. Once again, ball movement producing an open look, but Johnson can't put it down this time. Rebound, Sean Healy. Joe Heck to Matthew Richardson. Swarm by Jesse Johnson, has to get rid of it, finds Eric Richardson. Richardson, one on one, passes to Joe Heck. Ratliff. In trouble, finds it out with Matthew Richardson. Evades Kahari Carter there. The longest possession for the Lions. Now the crowd. Wants someone to make a move. Richardson had the layup. And that may not have been the best of moves there to try to steal the ball. The backcourt fouls are always a questionable decision, especially when you can get a stop on defense. And that's a big mistake on Eric Richardson's part. And that's going to lead Adam Schmalzbauer to call timeout. And the reason why it could be a mistake Eric Richardson now has four personal fouls with 7-11 left, and so Schmalzbauer has a choice to make. And not an easy one to foresee. Eric Richardson, the team's leading scorer with 15 points, but he may have to sit out for a few minutes. Over many hahas and Marcellus Hazard still leading the team with 18 points, but an overall tight game as we've seen throughout the year in many of these contests. Not a lot of blowouts, runaways. We're seeing a level of parity in high school basketball that we haven't seen in quite some time. That makes it more exciting. As we mentioned, half of the Tri-Metro teams with records of 500 or better Six of the 11, I should say, in the girls' end. There are 12 with visitation. <laughs> now, of course, conference titles are a mere footnote in the quest for many of these teams, which is a state tournament championship. And winning the conference gets you some publicity, but it's usually state or bust if you want that respect. And Marcellus Hazard, a mishap with Kahari Carter, and Hazard gestures to himself saying, my fault. 
but no hanging heads about the situation, although Providence can now tie it up with a three-pointer. Jackson Canfield over to Joe Heck. And a fade away off the mark from Ben Ratliff. Hazard weaving through. Stopped, but he'll punch through a second time. Up to 20 now as the Red Hawks go up by five. Bulky looking for Healy, finds him. Now Bulky has it again. Heck, out to Bulky. And Hazard picks it off. He's got plenty of speed, and he showcases it once more. Providence with just one timeout left. Minnehaha has yet to use any of them which may prove useful should this game come tight down the stretch. Gahari Carter scoops the miss from Canfield. Jesse Johnson lines it up. No. Gahari Carter gets the offensive rebound, and he'll take the foul from Sean Healy. It's a second personal. Carter will shoot a pair. He has seven points. <laughs> and Eric Richardson going back in. So not much of a breather, but he has four fouls. Foul situation always critical in these closer games. Van Ratliff to Canfield. And Providence, it's go time now. But we've seen a lot of the officials letting a lot of contact plays go. Layup no good. Joe Heck gets the rebound, but comes up short on the runner. I'm not sure if he quite had the form he was looking for. Jesse Johnson in the paint. Yes, and the foul. So Jesse can make deuces as well. Fouls on Bulky. Providence out of fouls to give now, and Minnehaha with their biggest lead of the game. Johnson with eight points. Can't make it nine. Leaps up for the rebound. Johnson from his sweet spot, bullseye. A five point possession for Jesse Johnson and Minnehaha expands their lead to 14, 58-44 with just over five to play. Providence needs a run now. They're in trouble in the backcourt. They do get it across before the 10 second rule comes into effect. That was deflected off of Gideon, but he gets a salute anyway from Jesse Johnson. Acknowledging the pressure defense. Bulky to inbound. Blocked, but a foul is called on Gideon. So Ratliff will shoot a pair. Which may help the Lions because that will stop the clock. A lot of family connections on this team. Ben Ratliff and Natalie Ratliff. And we mentioned the Healy's, Sean and Anne Marie. Uh, very much a family sport basketball is for Providence Academy. Of course, the girls have won the last two state championships in Class 2A. Or I should say, <laughs> not quite yet. Ratliff makes one of two. They won the 2012 championship. Ram won in 2011. The boys haven't been able to find the same success, but again, a win here against the top 10 team in 2A would do that, but they're gonna need a little more work. They do get a break though, Gideon missing the layup. But they need to score, and they need to be efficient. Richardson almost losing the ball. 
kick ball, so Providence will get an inbound to set things straight. Four minutes, 30 seconds. Providence needs another score. They can't get it from Heck. Richardson with an offensive rebound. He's in position. Hesitated perhaps a little too long. Minnehaha with the rebound. Here's John Pryor. Red Hawks can kill some clock if they wish. That's exactly what they're going to do. Pryor with an open look. Short. And the scramble goes to the hands of Ratliff. He finds Heck for the layup. Heck up to nine. Not over yet. But both teams out of fouls to give, so this could be a game of foul and chase here, depending on how many haha -ha plays the clock. Gideon. No. Rebound. Eric Richardson. And a blocking foul is called on John Pryor in the backcourt. That's his third and a potentially critical error for Minnehaha Academy. It depends on how the free throws go and Schmalzbauer will call his final timeout. So some interesting notes on the game reset. Let's do the reset for you. Three minutes and 39 seconds left in the second half. Minnehaha up by 11. 58 to 47. Providence Academy out of timeouts. Minnehaha has all five, so if they sense trouble, Lance Johnson can use one to stop the action. Both teams in the bonus. Providence not quite there, but they will be. Well, Providence is there. Minnehaha will get there on the next foul, so neither team has any fouls to give. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. But this is a major opportunity for the Providence Academy Lions as a photographer walks by. The foul was in the backcourt. So free throws are coming, but again, it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. So you miss this, and you compromise your chances. They cannot afford an empty possession in the one-on-one -on -one scenario. Well, let's see how these drills pay off. It's Jackson Campier. He has five points. A mellow outing from him thus far, although he did break the all-time school record for career points. Yeah. Canfield getting a little negotiation with the rim. Free throws critical at this stage with the clock stopped. Canfield will send a thank you card to the rim after that. Three minutes and 35 seconds left, and Providence has made this a single-digit margin, 58-49. Now the question is how you play defense. How patient can you be before you try to play foul and chase? Uh, great play by Gideon, getting the layup off the glass. And here's a little more of that three-quarters court. Bulky. Finds Joe Heck. Heck, fadeaway rejected. Picks it up. No good. Richardson gets in position. And he scores using the dribble to his advantage. Gahari Carter races down and catches Providence falling asleep. Richardson gets the roll. Strong game for him, 19 points. Here is Pryor. Finds Jesse Johnson. Gideon. Minnehaha will be content to use up clock with two minutes and 20 seconds left. The margin's still nine. Deflected by Providence, so no backcourt violation. Jesse Johnson for the dagger. Bullseye! Jesse 
Joe Heck fouls to stop the clock with 2.05, but Minnehaha may have executed the final play to escape. John Pryor at the line, and uh, the Red Hawks will finish out the regular season with another win, and will at least get the number three seed. But this presents a very interesting strategical assessment for Lance Johnson and crew. For these two teams could meet up on Friday. John Pryor with nine points. Depending on how the scheduling goes, it Let's take a look at this a little more. It's going to be a foul on, looks like, Minnehaha there. But the new point now with less than two minutes to play. So Providence will drop to four and six. But would retain the sixth seed most likely because they have a better overall record than St. Anthony Village and St. Paul Academy. Campfield at the line. So it may come down to what happens between Blake and Brooklyn Center. If Blake wins, these two teams will meet again on Friday in the first round of the Tri-Metro Conference Tournament at Providence Academy. Which is an almost unheard of scenario. A lane violation is called, so. Campfield left too early. When you're the free throw shooter, you cannot move until the ball hits the rim. He missed anyway. And Evan Tedonio will now go to the line for a pair. Marcellus Hazard was the catalyst by far for this one with his monstrous first half. But some strong free throw shooting here by the Red Hawks late to make sure there are no comebacks. This was a very tight game up until the last few minutes and then Minnehaha made their game clinching run. Some friendly rims here at Bergstrom Court. Always have good times here, though, with the talented teams that come through and hold the girls and the boys for Minnehaha Academy. Kahari Carter with the steal. And sends the crowd into a frenzy with a throwdown. Send that ball to Minnehaha Academy as he goes off the foot of Canfield. And Providence sending in the reserves now. Sends in the game out of reach. They include Ben Fredrickson, number 25. Sam Cardell is back in there. Fredrickson with the steal. He'll pull up. And what they tip in is Jackson Canfield. So that brings him up to 10 as he adds to that all-time school record for Providence Academy. John Pryor is fouled immediately by Sean Healy. And a line change coming in as well for Minnehaha Academy as uh, Lance Johnson doesn't need to, and the refs will let that happen. Usually the Trailing team will make the first move, but it's not a requirement. It's one of the uh, etiquette recommendations. So, Nicholas Gratchik, Jaleel Davis, and number 25, I believe that's Dane Berkland, who may have been mixed up. Mm -hmm. 
on the floor, and Pryor breaks double figures. Strong effort for Minnehaha Academy, four of their big names reaching double digits today. Pryor, Jesse Johnson, Kahari Carter, and Marcellus Hazard. And Pryor will take a seat. He finishes with 11. In his place, number 10, Trenton McCarthy. So Minnehaha will end the season with a win. The regular season, I should say. And Wentz gets on the board. He'll make the newspaper tomorrow. Minnehaha will extend their winning streak to five games with the conference tournament coming up. And Providence, unfortunately, will finish out the regular season losing six of the last seven, but they have a chance to rebound and perhaps beat the same team later this week in the new Tri-Metro Conference Tournament. 33 seconds. Jaleel Davis drains the runner, and he gets on the board. A great all-around effort by the Red Hawks. Bulky driving, no good. And it's picked up by number one, Nicholas Gretchik. And Minnehaha, will they push it one more time or will they be content to take their score as it is? Well, the, the deep reserves, they're not content. They don't want to run out the clock. They want to get some, <laughs> they want to get a highlight or two in. Five point nine seconds left. They want to represent the little guys. Gretchik, short, gets his own rebound. Can't beat the clock. Clean block by Healy, and that will be the final play of the game. Minnehaha Academy wins 77 56. They go to 18 and 4 on the year, 8 and 2 in conference play. Providence Academy drops to 11 and 9, 5 and 5 in conference play. But again, some major implications in this contest in terms of playoff seating for the new conference tournament. Let's recap the numbers for you quickly. Minnehaha Academy led by Marcellus Hazard with 22 points, 14 points from Jesse Johnson, 13 points from Kahari Carter, 11 points for John Pryor. Providence Academy's double-digit scores, Eric Richardson with 19 points, Ben Ratliff with 13 points, Jackson Canfield with 10. Now that does it from here as we wrap up our doubleheader. Thank you for watching this Minnehaha doubleheader in high school basketball. I'm Mike Beaton. We'll see you later this week.